all new product from Fox here. Now they've recently released their new F722 version 2 and this flight controller is feature packed. So with that being said, let's get started. So in today's video, we're going to be covering quite a lot. So the timestamps will be linked down below, also shown in the video progress bar. So you can skip to whatever part of the video you would like. Some of the things we're going to be taking a look at are the accessories, also the advanced breakdown and a basic setup guide for the FPV camera. So for the veteran flyers out there, we have the advanced breakdown. And for the beginners, we have the basic setup guide of how to connect your FPV camera, video transmitter, and as well as your receiver. So let's take a look at some of the accessories first here. So obviously we do get the flight controller itself, which we're gonna take a closer look at in a bit. And it comes in a simple box just like this. And you also get four rubber grommets, and that's about it here. Now, Foxier is in the works of a new ESC that's supposed to be one of the best for 6S. This is what I've heard, and I guess we'll get to see that as time goes on. And with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the advanced breakdown. So let's go ahead and break down the Foxair F7 here. So as the name implies, it is using an F7 microcontroller unit and we can see that there. However, in the first release, they were rocking the dual gyro, but here we only have one and it's the MPU 6000, if you could read that. So we're using MPU 6000 gyro. And the power input is going to be three to six S input, which is really great that it takes raw battery voltage as input. And it's actually mandatory you give it something above nine volts because this thing has a nine volt regulator on board, believe it or not. So we have a nine volt and a five volt, both rated up to two amps. And we can actually see a huge circuits on the backside for the two regulators. We have two switching regulators, in this area and this area. And we also have our memory. Now, if you take a closer look here, we see we have a diode and we have another diode. I'm guessing, okay, this is a guess right here. This is a TVS diode, which is a transient voltage suppression diode, which basically limits high voltage spikes into the system. But again, I could be wrong, but I am 90% certain that's what that is. And that's a really nice thing to see. It's kind of like a low ESR capacitor anyway. It just cuts off the, uh, the high voltage spikes. And it, it's really important because this is where all your sensitive stuff lies. You have your MP6000, your OSD, your flight controller. This is the, the main operation of the flight controller. So it's really nice they've done that. They have two, one on the top side and one on the bottom side. I'm guessing this is a normal diode. You can tell it's very close to the VCC and ground. And this is the area where you actually connect your ESC right here. So if you ever flip those by accident, then you have a high probability of not burning your flight controller if that works as uh, I think it should work. So that's a nice possible safety feature here. So now let's go ahead and cover the connection. So if you wanted to plug in a 4-in-1 ESC, you do have a connector. But at the same time, if you look at the bottom side, you also have access to every single thing of that connector right here. So you could solder direct to this if you wanted to and or use the connector up here. So, and again, we do have RX4 for telemetry here, VCC ground, because this thing should take battery voltage because it has a nine volt regulator. It needs something higher than nine volt to step it down to nine volt. And actually, I think this is the first, they're using a pretty big 3.3 volt regulator. That's pretty insane. LDOs are usually much cleaner than switching regulators in terms of noise. And you really want as clean, you know, the most, one of the most important thing in a quadcopter is to have a clean 3.3 volt because that's where your microcontroller unit lies, that's where the gyro lies, and that's where the OSD lies. And if there's really bad 3.3 volts, you'll probably see it in the OSD flickering. You have some weird twitches and, and all kinds of crazy things happening because the noise, what's, what's going on, the voltage is doing this. And when the gyro is sending data, this could jump into that data and then make it think that it rolled, but it actually wasn't even rolling. And that's when you get stuff that's completely untunable. So there are some flight controls like that, but it's really rare that we run into these nowadays. So again, it's really nice that we have all this filtration on board and they are in the works of an ESC. So I'm very curious to see how that's going to stack up. Now for UART ports, you basically have two usable. And what I mean by usable is you could use them to whatever you want, not including the receiver, not including the telemetry, and also not including the smart audio protocol. Those are all covered. You have TX5 for smart audio, you have uh, UART4 for ESC telemetry, and you also have uh, UART1 for the connection for your receiver. So you're left with two UARTs that you could use to whatever you want here, which is it's a nice touch here. So it's really good that they've utilized uh, as much of the pads as they can here. So we can see here is a TX3. So you could take, uh, here's TX3 and RX3. So you could use whatever you want. And you also have another one here. You have UR2 here available for you. Also next to some power, which is really nice to see. You also do have motor five and six outputs. Again, really good. We don't see that that much nowadays, actually. And uh, if you wanted to bridge, for example, if you wanted to give nine volts to your camera, 
then you would want to bridge these two together right now it's bridged into the five volt configuration and by default always double check these because if there is no solder here then your vtx and your camera won't get power and right here under this you actually see three pads and if you bridge these two together then you get nine volts and if you bridge the middle one with the bottom one you get five volts but make sure you only bridge two you know more than that so this is the vtx section see ground nine volt uh your yellow wire and your uh, smart audio protocol and if you had a five volt vtx which is really nice you just uh bridge those two and uh that's it same exact connection which is really nice to see here it's a nice touch and actually that's really it for the advanced breakdown there's nothing else to it uh what you can do is also again this is really uh dji friendly in a way i like to say friendly not re or ready basically because you don't have just that connector that connects the dji stuff but you can totally use it here because you have that nine volt you have an extra uart here really nice stuff really nice stuff so yeah that's really it so overall it looks like a pretty decent flight control i will be using it it's priced at a pretty average price around 30 bucks currently i'll have it linked down below and uh let's go ahead and jump into the beginner setup guide right now all right so now let's go ahead and jump to the fpv camera but before connecting it you need to take something into consideration here this piece right here and what that is right there is basically three pads and this will allow you to choose the output power that's going to go to your camera. And it's a very simple choice. Five volts. Always choose five volts. So make sure you take a look at the board and you see the middle pad with the right pad bridged. As you can tell right there, we see those bridged. And that means it's outputting five volts. And if the middle one with the left one is bridged and it's outputting nine volts. And if your camera can't take nine volts, then you're more than likely going to fry it. So make sure the five volt is bridged. Very important you do that before connecting it. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the power, which is right here. This is the red wire from your camera. You're just going to go ahead and connect it to the positive right there. And again, make sure you have 5 volts selected. Next, we're going to need the ground, also related to the power. And it's very simple. Pretty good labeled, as you can tell. Ground, we got it. And the last one is video. Now, video, you might be like, why the hell do we put our video line into our flight controller and not our video transmitters directly? Well, the reason for that is because of this guy right here. The video line comes in, goes to this chip. This chip puts the battery info, how long you've been flying, your GPS location, puts all that information on your video feed, and then sends it down to your goggles with all that useful information. And that is the reason why we go ahead and connect our video lines to our flight controllers. But you could directly, you could also connect this yellow line direct to the video transmitter, but you won't have any of that information. So yeah, uh, that's something to take note of if you didn't know that. And that's it for the FPV camera. Let's move on to the next step. So before connecting your video transmitter, you need to make sure of one thing, which is very important, what your video transmitter's input voltage is. It'll actually tell you in the specifications. And there's only two in the market, ones that take five volts only, and other ones that take seven volts and plus. It'll say seven to 36, seven to 26. There's only two in the market, five volts and seven plus. So you need to figure out which one you have. And based upon that, what we have to do is modify this little section because they're going to connect exactly the same way, both of them. But before you connect them, you need to make sure what's going on here. So what you're seeing right here, it says 5 volt and 9 volt. And you're seeing the two 9 volt bridge. So there's, these are actually three pads like this next to each other, kind of like these three right here, like that. But since it has solder on them, you don't really see that. And if you bridge the middle one, with the top one right there, if you're looking at the same orientation, then you give nine volts output. And if you bridge the middle one with the bottom one like that, then you would get five volts output. So if you had a five volt video transmitter, you're gonna wanna bridge those two together. Make sure only two are bridged together, the middle one and the bottom one. And if you have nine volts, you wanna make sure you bridge the middle one and the top one. Make sure you do this before you connect it. And I'm just gonna leave just this little marker right here. So up is nine volts down is five volts so if you bridge the, the middle one with the the middle one with the bottom one you get five volts and if you bridge the middle one with the top one you get nine volts so make sure you get that first before you connect this so let's go ahead and get started every video transmitter basically has three main wires and a couple extras if you want to connect which we'll also slightly cover in this video we're going to cover the main ones which are the most important so first of all we need is vcc and maybe on your video transmitter might say uh, the seven to whatever volts here, or it might say input voltage input, not the five volt out, never connect anything to the five volt out because that's just a five volt output. So we're going to go ahead and grab this one and we are just going to connect it to the positive. Very simple stuff, kind of like batteries you do. Everything needs power here. Next, we're going to go ahead and grab the ground and it's going to go right into ground. Next, we have video, which is going to be VTX. I don't know why they called it VTX, but yeah, that's going to be your yellow wire. 
That's going to be called video out, VO, whatever it might be on your video transmitter. It's usually the yellow line. Now, with some video transmitters, you're still left with one wire called RX or Smart Audio or IRC Tram Protocol. And that is basically just a protocol that allow you to change the channels and the output power of your video transmitter through your controller without the need of coming here and pressing the buttons. So it, it can be very useful at times. I always use it. And where you'd want to set that up would be right here on TX5. And once you've set that up on TX5, in beta flight configuration, you need to go to the ports tab that's on the left, and you'll find UART5, and you go down the peripherals and choose whether it's a smart audio or IRC tramp protocol. And just like that, you'll have that activated and do a couple of Google searches. You'll know how to actually use it. And that's it for connecting the video transmitter. The most important part is to check what is bridge for the power output. And yeah, it's very important. I can't, I can't stress that enough. So let's go ahead and jump into the receiver section now. So in this part of the video, we're going to be discussing the S bus connection, also iBus and the TBS crossfire. So with that being said, let's get started because they're, they're all basically going to go into the same place here. So as you can tell, we have the word RC, which means remote control. I don't know why they do this, but as we can tell, it's next to a TX1. So that's where we're going to want to connect our S bus signal, for example. We'll just start with S bus since it's right in front of us here. So let's go ahead and set that up to right there. So now we have it set up on RC. You can read RC. We have TX1 and RC. And just like that, we have our S bus signal. However, also, if you had iBus, you would put it into the same exact place right there. And if you had the TBS crossfire, let's actually write that down here. We'll say TBS. Usually there's two wires, R and an X. So we'll say RX and TX. So it has two wires usually. And what you'd want to do here is you actually want to set up the TX, the same place as the iBus and the SBus, and the RX, which I should actually move on the other side, and the RX of the TBS uh, receiver, you're going to want to set up right here, right there. So we'll just say boom, just like that. And like that, you'd have your TBS crossfire set up right here, your iBus and SBus. Next thing we need is power. Very simple stuff. Your red wire on your receiver is going to go into 5 volts, and it's going to be slightly messy now. And it's going to go to that 5 volts right there. And then the last one's going to be ground. So let's go ahead and grab ground. And we're going to say it's also going to be slightly messy. So we're going to have to kind of go over these a little bit. Boom, boom. And there we go, right there. And just like that, we have everything set up. This will be used on a build very soon. Uh, I think it's going to be set up on a DJI build. I really want to try this out. And Fox is also working on new ESC, so it's going to be pretty interesting to see what the hell they're going to do. And again, everything is linked down below. If you could check those out, it's great to support the channel. And also, I do have a Patreon. Come check it out. If you like what you see, join. If you don't, then don't. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.